back to another edition of Sunday Sense, episode 66. Sorry for that clickbaity title, did I get you? <laughs> so we're gonna get to that coordination dyno at the end of the video. But to start off, I wanna do more beginner problems because I've been having a lot of people run into me at the gym and they're really excited new climbers. So I wanna feature some V1, V2s, V3s. And I'm gonna do kind of side-by-side -side beta comparisons. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see kind of what I'm talking about. But it just gives you an idea of how different climbers climb. I'm six foot three, I climb way differently than my friends who are five foot seven, five foot eight. So let's do a couple of those and then we'll try that coordination dyno. It's pretty gnarly, it's a V7, V8 and it's just super, super fun. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, the first one we're gonna try out is a V1 that starts out on the underside of the visor, follows the red holds up to these pinches and it looks like there's a nice little match finish hold up top. Let's give it a burn. This is my buddy Jack on the left. You'll notice we have a little bit different beta on this problem. When I go to the right pocket, I'm flagging my left foot out, whereas he keeps the left foot on. And then our beta differs here where I do a left drop knee to go to that left and he drops his knee right. And then finally on the finish match, I am on top of the volume and Jack keeps the left foot on the start hold. Okay, this V1 is on the side of the scoop, yellow holds, following pretty good holds up to the top finish jug. Okay, this V1 is a little bit more straightforward and easier than the last one. You'll see my friend Peter on the left, he goes for the more traditional beta, and I definitely use tall person beta, I'm skipping holds everywhere. But pay attention to Peter's feet, he's very good at moving his hips into the wall, and it's just very fluid overall. Good job, Peter. Okay, this next one is a purple tag. Starts on the volume in the left cave, and you can see the steepness of the cave right here. It's gonna follow the purple holds and finish on another match hold right there. Big moves. Okay, I managed to squeeze three split screens on this one. On the far left, you have my friend Mike McGrees, who's a very strong, powerful climber. And you'll notice how good he is at bringing his feet up as he climbs. I, on the other hand, have to uh, keep my feet low and use my length to go to some of these long moves. And then the top is the trickiest part of this problem. There's a left foot that you can't really see behind that tan hold. And then coming into the match finish, you have to drop your hips a little bit. All right, for this next one, we're gonna compare six foot five tall Justin to Peter here. And this one's interesting because Peter actually chooses to go dynamically on this climb, whereas Justin climbs it the more traditional route. So that really big move for Peter is very efficient actually. And Justin does a really good job at keeping low feet. He has to because of how tall he is. But this is a pretty cool V2, V3 with a nice match finish. Pink hold, red tag, V3, V4, again in the scoop. Nice big slopey holds with some jugs and then interesting sloper up top. Let's see how the beta goes on this one. All right, if you don't have too many red tags under your belt, this is definitely one to try. I thought it was a little bit soft. And I again opt for the tall person beta, skipping certain holds. Jack uses that left crimp to come into that right sight pull. And the top sloper, Looks like it's pretty bad, but as long as you stay tight to the wall, you're gonna be okay. And finish up at the top of the wall. Okay, black holds, V3, V4. I think there's gonna be some heel hook beta involved. And then we're gonna follow the black holds up. Small crimps, left hand at the top, and finish jug. Okay, here I am with Peter again. You'll notice he gets a really nice heel hand match to go to the next hold and I just throw off of the right foot and use my length on this one. The rest of the climb we have very similar beta, um, but again, I just use lower feet because of how tall I am. Okay. 
Okay, yellow hold, pink tag, so V5, V6. Follows these banana shaped holds. Looks like there's gonna be a press and there's a little intermediate crimp that help you get to the uh, top. Finish match hold again. Cool, the fun stuff, V5, V6. Here, I think I was a little bit inefficient putting the right foot out. Jack keeps the left feet on the left side and falls into that right hold and that saves a lot of energy. And then he uses the intermediate bump, whereas I just skip that intermediate crimp to go to that pinch we're on. And the hardest part of this climb, I think, is for sure this top out. It's very tricky to get your body positioning to match that hold because it's very slopey. Um, I finally figured out to get some higher feet up, but you could see Jack was also struggling with this. It's very, very tricky to match this thing. Let's see Jack struggle up here. Okay, come on, Jack. Sweet. So this next V5, V6 actually features a really cool heel hook, but my friend Peter was going for a pogo dynamic move to go to that right hand. And it was really fun watching him give it a, like a couple burns. Unfortunately, he couldn't stick it, but that kind of gave me an idea to uh, do a beta the traditional way with the heel hook on the left side and Peter's pogo beta on the right side. So if you're going for the left beta, make sure you try to stick that heel the whole way through. The pogo is definitely the harder option here. And then get a left foot up, stay tight, go to that left crimp, and nice right crimp to finish off the climb. Super, super fun angle here. All right, enough comparisons. Let's get to this V7, V8 coordination dyno. It's gonna be sick. So we don't usually do coordination dynos at this gym. They're more of a new school IFSC thing. The refuge is known for its sort of old school setting. Just really small holds getting you prepared for the outside. So it's really fun to try these coordination dynos because uh, you have to like tap into a different part of your psyche. Like know how to do pogos, know how to turn your hips and blast off into the wall. And just a lot of coordination. It's just very uh, brain and physically intensive. So let's give it a few burns. So I think the trick is gonna be really stomping onto that hold right there as soon as you catch the right hand up there. The top makes it a V7, V8, but today I just want to work that coordination piece. It's super gnarly. All right, obviously I'm no coordination dyno expert, but I'm going to do my best to kind of share what I learned trying this problem a bunch of times. Um, these types of problems are very popular among the kids competition circuit and even the pros. You need a lot of coordination and power to pull these things off. And when I first started trying it, I immediately noticed how yeah. far away it seemed. Um, you definitely want to pogo and use that momentum pulling off of the crimps and stomp as hard as you can on that thing. But I think what I learned right away oh. is that instead of trying to jump to the right, you more so have to jump kind of straight up and then land on the foot. So once I figured that out, I started kind of pressing off my left toe and going in an upward trajectory more. And I was at least touching the right foothold. And here, Peter, I think you need to press off your left foot more. I think you're going too horizontal. So once I kind of ingrained that in my system, I really focused on jumping off of that left. Even though the crimps are not good, I was getting closer and closer by just focusing my energy on jumping off the left. So right here is the send. I mean, not the send, but at least I stuck it. And it's just so satisfying. You try this thing a million times and then you stick it once and it feels so good. Obviously, uh, I didn't know what to do from there, but I'm really happy with the progress, you know? This thing, <laughs> It's very challenging for us old guys. The young kids send it so quickly. Um, the next couple moves I will figure out during the week when I'm there on my lunch sessions. 
but you definitely need a lot of tension. These dual texture holds are pretty gnarly. They only feel good in a certain position. But yeah, super happy that I was able to stick it. Man, that's hard. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap the episode up there. Hope you enjoyed. Hit like, subscribe as always. Gonna keep churning these out. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Peace.